I came to Psalm 48. And when I came to verse 14, for this is God, our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. There's four things in here, and, and they really all start with P. For this is God we're talking about. God. He's preeminent. He's high above every, everyone and everything. Our God. He's personal. It's not just some distant, far-off, nebulous idea. This is our God. He's personal. And, as, and then it says forever and ever. He's permanent. And then he'll be our guide even unto death. He's pastoral. He's, he's a shepherd. He's our guide. And I want you to think through this with me, that great is the Lord, but first of all, he's great because he is preeminent. This is God. God. It doesn't say this is a God or this is some God. This is God. God. This is the supreme being of the universe. This is the creator and sustainer of the universe. This is God. And his preeminence is seen in his word, in his world, in his works, and in his worship. But just think about how the preeminence of God is seen in his word, the Bible. I mentioned that I read through the Bible every year. You can probably quote Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God. He's right there. He's the fourth word in the Bible. In the beginning, God. I think the Trinity is seen in the first three verses of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens of the earth. And then the second verse talks about how the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. And then the third verse says, and God said, let there be light. I think all three members of the Trinity are in the first three verses of the Bible. And then you go down in chapter 1 of Genesis to verse 26, and the Bible says, and God said, let us make man in our image. There's the Trinity again. This is the Godhead speaking to one another, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's us make man in our own image. And we are made in the image of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, body, soul, and spirit. And so we find the preeminence of God in His Word, and we find it in His world that He created. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And if we went back to the 19th Psalm, the Bible says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows His handiwork. And night unto night and day unto day, the, the creation is shouting forth the preeminence of God. Wow. His preeminence is seen in His Word, in His world, and it's seen in the words that describe God in the Bible. I uh, got online when I was preparing this message, and, and I went to look at names of God. Have you ever done that? Uh, on this particular website, there was a list of the names and titles of God, over 250 of them. Listen to just some of them. Titles of God. Most High God. It's one of my favorite. I talked about that in Sunday school. God of gods. Lord of lords. King of kings. High and lofty one. The king of glory. The glory and strength of Israel. Almighty God. Lord of hosts. Mighty one of Jacob. Great and awesome God. I am that I am. Ancient of days, the first and the last, Alpha and Omega, creator of heaven and earth, father of lights, God of all the earth, maker of heaven and earth, consuming fire, holy one of Israel, judge of all the earth, the just and mighty one, eternal king, 
great king, king eternal, immortal, invisible, king of glory, king of heaven, king of the nations, king of saints, majesty on high, ruler of all things, the hiding place, the high tower, the horn of my salvation, my glory, my song, my strength, my refuge, my rock, my shade, my shelter, my shield, my strong fort fortress, my strong tower. I mean, on and on. The names of God declare His preeminence. Wow. He is God. This is God we're talking about here. He is absolutely preeminent. In the New Testament, Paul writes, Ephesians 1.21, He is far above, far above all principalities and powers. He's to be exalted. He's to be adored. He's to be admired. I love how it says back there in uh, 2 Thessalonians. I'm going to just look it up real quick. And when Paul writes about the second coming of Jesus, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10, when He comes in that day to be glorified in His saints and to be admired among all those who believe. So when He comes, we're going to be gathered together with Him. And you know, among other things, we're going to just admire Him. He's to be admired, it says in that verse. And secondly, He's personal. It says He's our God. I love this. This magnificent creator, sustainer, self-existing, self-determining, self-perpetuating God who is the end and the beginning, the Alpha and the Omega, the Most High God, and all of that, He's personal. If you know Him, you can say He's our God. And if you know Him, you can even say, He's my God. The Lord is my shepherd. Wow. So personal. I love that. When He revealed Himself to Abraham, and remember, Abraham was, grew up in a pagan country and a pagan family. And this God comes to Abraham and says, Abraham, I know you don't know me and very much about me, but you can hear my voice and I want you to get up from out of your country and away from your kindred and go to a land that I'm going to show you. And I'm going to make of you a great nation. And out of you, all the nations will be blessed. And those that curse you, I'll curse. And those that bless you, I'll bless. The Abrahamic covenant. And God further reveals himself in the 17th chapter and says, I'm going to make a covenant, Abraham, between me and you. Personal. What a God. And we read of Moses in Exodus 33 that the Lord spoke to Moses as he would speak with a friend. The relationship that God and Moses had, it was personal. And of course, David wrote, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And Jesus taught his disciples to pray, our Father who art in heaven. And we have the promise of God himself, I will never leave you or forsake you. And Jesus told his disciples before he went back to heaven, he says, don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God the Father, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it weren't so, I would have told you, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Personal. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you, John, James, Peter, Bartholomew, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm going to come back for you. And I'm going to receive you unto myself so that where I am, 
you can be also. Wow, this God is absolutely preeminent, but he is also personal. When you really stop and think about it, there's really nothing in this world that we can see and touch that's permanent. But God is permanent. Our God is forever and, for emphasis, ever. And we read in Scripture, God says this of Himself, Malachi 3, 6, I am the Lord, I do not change. And of course, Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our God is permanent. This is God. He's preeminent. Our God, He's personal. Forever and ever, He's permanent. And finally, He's pastoral. He will be our guide even to death. Of course, we often think in relation to death, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you, my shepherd, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A wonderful, wonderful psalm. But the, the truth that permeates that psalm is that even in death, in the valley of the shadow of death, we don't need to fear. We don't need to fear evil. We don't need to fear anything because our God, our shepherd, is with us before, during, and after death. Because after my life where his goodness and mercy has followed me every single day, every single step, then I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Wow. He's a shepherd. He's pastoral. Psalm 100 says, we are the sheep of his pasture. Um, and of course, God, the Bible often refers to, as, as to the saints, to us as his sheep, which I think is endearing, but it's not necessarily complimentary. When you think about it, sheep aren't the most desirable of animals or most to be admired of animals. You know, when the settlers came across, you know, and settled our country, uh, they came across wild horses. They came across wild buffalo. They came across wild hogs. But they never came ac across a flock of wild sheep. Never. Because sheep are helpless. Sheep are defenseless. Sheep are easily led astray. Sheep are vulnerable to attack. Sheep can only survive if they have a shepherd that makes sure they're going to be okay. And I'm so glad that our God is also our shepherd. He is the great shepherd of the sheep. He is the good shepherd. He is the chief shepherd. And he will be our guide even unto death. I'm here to testify this morning we have a great God. Amen? We have a great God. And we're given four reasons here. It's because he's preeminent as God. He's personal. He's our God. He's permanent. He's forever and ever. And he's pastoral. He will be our guide even unto death. And I just... Pray and hope that this God is your God, that you are able to say, 
He's my God. He's my shepherd. And I always challenge people. When I use the 23rd Psalm, the most important part of this Psalm is the first five verses. Can you say, first five words, can you say, the Lord is my shepherd? Because if you can't say that with total assurance, the rest of the psalm is really not for you. It's, it's, it's not that comforting. But if you can say the Lord is my shepherd, everything's fine. Because we are in his hands and they are wonderful hands indeed. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for these wonderful truths. Thank you for being God Especially we thank you for being our God and for being our guide forever and ever, even unto death and beyond. Thank you for that, Lord. Send us on our way rejoicing with these wonderful truths. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.